Hi folks, this is all the fruit, and here we have Puracanta coccinea, or the fire thorn. One of those many, many plants which in Europe are being used only as ornamentals, but in other parts of the world, they're actually considered edible. Well, there is some debate about if, uh, whether the fire thorn is poisonous or not. However, it is being used for gems and jellies, or on a regular basis in the US and all of the fresh berries contain some cyanide like compound there are no cases of serious poisoning of animals or humans um, it's said if you eat a couple of handfuls of it you might get nausea and vomiting I guess the sign it is also in the in the seeds Mm-hmm, 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 Well, yeah, I guess you can chew out the, mm, you can suck out the flesh and spit out most of the seeds without chewing them. Very interesting plant and very plentiful. This is what it looks like in a bad, dry location after three years of drought. The plants are still covered with berries and in a plentiful year the amount of berries could be two or three times higher but imagine even in this year well if I used my hands or better even if I had some sort of comb within half an hour I can collect like I don't know 50 or 100 kilograms of this stuff and so, yeah, an interesting plant for foraging, survival, for preparing your own stuff. Hmm, the taste. I already made a video about the species last year in spring, in March or April. When a lot of plants were still covered with this fruit. Now, it's the first day of October, but it looked like this in September usually even since August. So August to, or let's say September to April, the berries don't change much. They look a little bit more weathered after a winter of frost and rain and sun and wind. Hmm. And the taste? The taste also doesn't change much. Nothing to do with taste like right now. Boring. A slight sourness, a slight sweetness. They taste juicy and refreshing, but mostly boring. Mm. Mm. <coughs> I mean boring <coughs> if compared to a cherry or an apple or a blueberry. They taste okay. Not it's not exciting, but not bad. Well, and why are they pretty much the same in September and in next April? There are basically two strategies with berries. Well, berries are usually those small, reddish, yellowish, orangish fruit, which are made to be eaten mostly by birds. One strategy is to have them sweetest and juiciest berries, so the birds will eat your berries first, those berries don't last long. The other strategy is to have more starchy berries, which last for many months, and yeah, depending how how starchy they are, how many toxins they have, how tasty they are, how hard they are, birds will eat them, they will be the second choice, the third choice, the fourth choice, the fifth choice, and the most horrible berries, they can stay on the plant for like a year or so, and finally they might be eaten. So either you have very tasty berries and have to be eaten within a week or two, or you have really the really boring starchy berries which can last for half a year or longer. Let's look into one of those berries. Oh yeah, I can clearly see the grains of starch. If you can see like little glitter in the flesh of this fruit. 
Nie, do osady. Do osady little grains of starch. Basically like in a potato. You know how the inside of the potato is sometimes is like a bit shiny. Yeah, here. The little grains of starch. Quite a starchy fruit and because it is so plentiful and because it lasts throughout the winter it was a very important plant for foraging in parts of North America for the Native Americans and the early settlers. You can collect it in autumn but if you realize that you don't have enough food during the winter you can go out and collect it during the winter. And then you can chew it. I guess you can boil it, you can sieve it. Mm. to remove the seeds and you are left out with them. Starchy residue, which tastes quite boring, but it doesn't taste bad like a lot of the other survival foods. And also I read somewhere that in some parts of the US this is one of the most popular gems. Well yeah, if you can add some sugar and maybe some nice flavor, you can make quite a nice gem because it's available in giant amounts. So yeah, very nice plant, so very nice fruit for starchy foods, very nice uh, food for gems and jellies. What a pity we don't know it and we don't use it in Germany and in many German books it even says it's toxic. That's a big problem. A lot of the German books, whenever the author didn't know if something is edible, he would name it toxic. I'm pretty sure that this was among the toxic plants in some of the books I read at the time when I got most of the information from books and not from the internet. So I haven't eaten it for decades. I started eating it just one or two years ago. I'm not eating it on a regular basis because it's quite boring. But yeah, for a boring plant it's not bad. Mm. I can totally recommend it, just maybe mm. press it to a sieve, through a sieve to get out the mm to get out the seeds. They contain cyanide, just like all the other rosacea seeds uh, contain cyanide, like apple seeds and cherry pits also contain cyanide and can poison you in large amounts. But this stuff, yeah, you could basically compare it to a really boring starchy apple. And a really boring and a ton of really boring starchy apples is really not something to sneeze on when you are in a survival situation. So folks, this was the fire thorn. Now I tried it in the first days of October when it's still kind of fresh. Stay tuned for a lot more fruit videos from the beautiful city of Heidelberg in Germany. And don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe.